All right, so what are we doing today? Having a quick look at some of the work on Bygen version 10, which is in development, but it's taking a heck of a long time because, like I said in a recent video, free projects tend to take the longest for the littlest pay, which is why it's going to be exclusive to Silver Tier patrons for a while when it's ready. Anyway, so let's take a look at surface distribution logic. There are three main pillars to Bygen above surface, the actual mesh surface itself, and the volume. But we want people to be able to make parametric effects. We want them to have an object selected and then and apply a logic library of some kind to it so they can build up effects. For example, if you have the object selected and you want to do some kind of deformation, you would choose a deformation logic library, apply it, then you would have control over that in the geometry nodes. Basically, you'll be presented with a visual library like this with a bunch of node groups in the context of certain layouts for which you can modify. Let's say you had that object that's been deformed and you wanted to do some kind of distribution on the surface of it, maybe have some things waving around on it, scattering points, etc. You then go to the above surface pillar here and then choose a distribution logic you can apply that and then it will stack on top of it so you'll be able to stack different logic libraries so i'm inside of the distribution surface logic library here and what you can see is it's basically a high level node tree and geometry nodes and we're coming up with conventions so we have different parked areas of logic so we've got selection by geometry scale by proximity point towards object etc these modifications you can think of as being split into before instances and after instances have been created so we call this our transformation bus as you can see named here so we are splitting up the main areas like translation, rotation, and scale. A little bit like Factorio. I don't know if you've ever done that, played that game. It's great. So we're splitting up the bus, modifying instances, and then joining the bus together. And that's how we get the system. So for example, if I look down into the scale section of the bus, we've got things like selection by geometry, which would be to have things only appear within a certain mesh. So if I plug that into the scale bus and actually grab this icosphere, see as I move the icosphere around, things only appear within that space. Likewise, I can use the scale by proximity. That's also plugged into that, by the way, but it doesn't have to be. So let's say I bypass the selection by geometry. So now the icosphere is not going to do anything, but the scale by proximity is plugged into the empty object or whatever it's referencing the empty. So as I move an empty object around, it's going to scale in relation to that. So do you see what's going on here? We're trying to come up with conventions for ways like this, where it'll be easy for people to modify the node groups and plug and play basically the effects they want. It's not so easy to do just for an asset library. It's not even easy to do if all of the node groups were just scattered right here in the node tree because just having node groups alone doesn't tell people how they can modify things or plug things in and out. So literally we spent a little while just sitting right here in this section and I said, okay, you know what? What if you put the scale here, but you just do like an empty link here and because of how the link is pointing at this angle, it will look to people like this is the line that they intercept with that logic, if that makes sense. So we've been thinking about things like that quite a lot. We can plug in things like rotation randomness, and we see intuitively that we've got this rotation line in the bus, and we could just like intercept it like that. We've got the transformation section. We can move along the normal, so we can choose like the maximum outer distance for like point distribution, instance distribution, etc. We've got an option to instance object by proximity displacement. So let's see what happens if we plug that in. Okay, and I just saw some things move. We can see that the object being targeted is empty. So if I move empty around, what we can see is that the points are moving in response to the position of the empty object. So that's what we're doing, and we're trying to do it for as many logic libraries as we can. I'm just showing you the very simple like surface distribution one, but we've got things like you know displacement working on different deconstruction effects, 41s, etc. But likely the first release version of Biogen version 10 will be very simple in the way of maybe one or two logic libraries for any particular one of these pillars. Now I've got some extra work time that hasn't been added to the the wiki at the moment. So let's actually talk about that a bit more. I'm on curtisall.online slash Patreon. If we scroll down, we can see this section called the Community Project Fund. So Biogen is a free, in quotes, community project, meaning that it's freely available for people to download. I've been doing this system recently where the Patreon wage decides how many hours I spend working on free projects every month, and Biogen is one of those. However, you can't really get into a flow state when there aren't enough hours to work on something. So I've basically just been doing all the time I want to on the project to try and get it done, which accumulates over time. So let's say that Biogen version 10 was ready right now, then I would mark this point in the timeline. It will then become exclusive to patrons on the silver tier and above, and it won't be released until the overtime has been paid for. So you can see the amount that the patron wage is going to take a chunk out of the overtime every month. 
at the current rate, it looks like it's going to take well over half a year to a year, possibly more by the time we're done, like putting all the hours in, before it would even become public if it was ready. So we might as well just call it a Patreon exclusive for the time being. So this data is out of date because there's been way more that's happened since then. Anyway, we've had some disgusting results with this as well. Oh yeah, this was a more simplified version. Oh, did I mention things can be animated very easily as well? Yeah, so we're going to have like animated motion based effects. This was basically just an, a test of combining things. So it's all done in one node tree here at the moment, but it was a little look at doing surface deformation and then stacking with distribution effects. So it's always fun having like some gross alien stuff to, uh, to play with. It was a bit weirder beforehand, but I've had to put a bit of a, a rain on Jared and say, you know, let's just try and keep things simple for now. <laughs> you know, clean, easy for people to build upon. So yes, Biogen is an add-on, but I can also mark the node groups as assets as well. So in theory, the content pack system could work completely compatibly with the asset browser system in Blender. So all of the logic nodes being created here could be accessed from the asset browser if we wanted, uh, which seems like a perfectly sensible thing to do. So yeah, just let you know that exists. Remember, sign up to the Patreon. You're going to help speed up the process of making this public and actually just getting it made. So just to clarify, there is no version of Biogen version 10 available yet to anyone but when we have a simple first draft of it that'll become available to the patrons first unless the overtime's been paid for i'll keep you updated on what happens with that so if you made it this far through the video put some kind of spaghetti or noodle related emoji in the comments so i can see if you made it this far have a great day everyone and i'll see you next time